In just a couple of years, iSpace has raised $195 million through crowdfunding plus a half a million dollar payment from a competition called Google XPRIZE. Private teams from around the world were in a $30 million race to explore the moon. Whoever succeeded XPRIZE would redefine what is possible. A real private commercial landing on the moon. Let's go R2, off to the Cape again. The Japanese technology startup company named iSpace raised millions to build a lunar lander that will change the history of Japan and their first lunar program. Their mission to land the first commercial lunar lander on the moon while carrying private owned payloads to the lunar surface as well. At a deal price using SpaceX Falcon 9 and off-the-shelf materials, this mission to the moon is only $50 million. The lander will be the United Arab Emirates' first rover moon mission. Two missions are scheduled in total for the program so far, but adding new missions could be very possible. If successful, Japan will be ahead of many with a gateway moon program for the private sector to bring their business to the moon. This will allow commercial companies to do their own studies of the moon, perhaps gather precious materials from the lunar surface, and probably to also debunk the rumors that we never went to the moon in the first place. So could this be the start of commercializing the moon? Hmm. Possibly. The iSpace Lunar Exploration Program consists of the M1, or what they call Mission 1. The lander is called Hakuto R. Hakuto means white rabbit in Japanese. It's why the logo here looks like it's got bunny ears on it. The Japanese have a folk tale that there's been a white rabbit living on the moon for centuries. The R in the mission stands for robot. iSpace has collaborated with many companies to receive funding from a small glue company to having Citizen jump on board for this mission, along with a few others. Citizen, as some of you may not know, were the first watches worn by the Apollo astronauts on the moon, starting one year after Apollo 11 in 1970. The titanium used on some of these watches will be used in the Hakuto landing gear. They call it a recrystallized titanium, almost like a super titanium never used in space. But Citizen has a reputation by taking this type of material and making it right. It's a superheated titanium that is then cooled very rapidly. You can get this crystalline alloy that sort of looks like a meteorite from the surface of the moon. It's pretty cool. Citizen has actually made a limited edition watch using these same materials. But at $4,000 a pop, I unfortunately can't afford that. Hakuto R M1 will help provide data to help contribute to NASA's Artemis program. We will learn a lot from this private mission. Among three Canadian experiments also on board, we will learn about Hakuto's orbit, about its deep space navigation maneuvers to test orbital control, and to study more about the near side of the moon and eventually go to the poles of the moon. Because in the poles is where the water is frozen, in the soil. By landing there, we can find out where those resources really are. Water is iSpace's main interest because water is what can be divided into hydrogen, oxygen. It can be used as fuel, as well as life support. 
This could allow the private sector to really build some possible fuel stations on the surface of the moon. A Kudo R is not very big. It's only about seven foot tall, roughly about 2.3 meters. It will land at the Atlas Crater, a 52 mile impact crater. It will have two 4K cameras on board, a microscope and a thermal imaging system and a probe to test all the samples. NASA will also have a CubeSat on board called Lunar Flashlight. The Lunar Flashlight will search for traces of water, ice, inside the deepest of craters of the moon. It has an infrared laser and spectrometer. It will detach from Akuto before it starts its landing procedure. I wonder why it's going to detach. Why? Because landing on the moon is extremely difficult? And this will be their first try. Place your bets, people. We had issues with Capstone, and that was just to orbit the moon. But I am so excited for this launch. It will be launched on a SpaceX Falcon 9 Block 5 rocket with Booster 1073, which will be returning on LZ-1 here at the Cape. So everyone on the Space Coast is gonna be waking up to a sonic boom a quarter past 4 a.m. in the morning. That's gonna be great, but I'm here for you because it's your space. Let's go check out this launch, come on. iSpace continues to overcome new and unique challenges every day, but we are committed to make our vision a reality. This is the dawn of the lunar economy. Join us in this new chapter of humanity. Let's go to the moon. As you can see on your screen, the iSpace Series 1 Lunar Lander 
is now on its way towards the moon.